This is the Oklahoma Sports Podcast presented by OklahomaSports.net. Stay tuned for interviews and information about high school, college, and professional sports around the state of Oklahoma. Now here's your host, Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for stopping by the podcast. Today, our visit is with the play-by-play voice of the Southwestern Bulldog, Steve McTeer. And Steve, I want to talk to you about the women's basketball season. You know, we've had a lot of perspective of that here on OklahomaSports.net. We've had a chance to visit with Coach Kelsey Music. We've talked with Haley and Hayden and Bethany and and, uh, just this team as a whole, not just this year, but through the last four years. But now some perspective from your end. You've had a chance to watch them all year long and man, it has been quite a ride. I, it was it was amazing, you know, to, to to start the season the way they did. And you know, my very first game, they lose to a team that I had gotten to know really well from my college days. And I thought, man, everyone told me this team was going to be great. <laughs> and then from there, you know, thirty five straight wins later, to to be in Columbus, Ohio, playing for a national championship game, and to come as close as they did. Uh, the ride was pretty remarkable. I mean, this will go down as one of the best teams in school history, certainly of the uh, NCAA era. This is this is the best team. And they've got players that left a legacy. Coach Music has built uh, quite the program. And, you know, as, as good as the seniors that are leaving are, this team is still going to be, I think, one of the best teams in the conference next year. Uh, but this ride, this ride was kind of a once-in-a-lifetime deal, especially for me. Yeah, and there's there's no doubt the cupboard is not bare for Coach Music. I mean, not only has she been able to recruit well, and there are many players still on the roster, but this bodes well for then recruiting for the future to you know find if the next Haley and Hayden aren't already there, the ones that will be coming up. And that's one thing that she talks about. You know, she says you can go Division One, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's certainly nothing wrong with playing at an OU or an Oklahoma State or an Oral Roberts. But those teams more than likely aren't going to be competing for a national championship because you've got the Yukons and the Baylors of the world. At Swasu, you can compete for a national championship because the field is so wide open. You don't have one dominant force. And that was the message to Haley and Hayden when they came in as freshmen was, look, you're going to be competing for championships here. And that message, I think, has resonated with the rest of the team. And it certainly resonated throughout the rest of Oklahoma because all of these players, save for one, are from Oklahoma. So the fact that that message was able uh, to kind of penetrate the minds of some of these young women and, and what they were able to do, that's now a reality. That what that, that that wasn't an empty promise that she gave them. That that was a reality and will be a reality. I mean, they're going to be competing for conference championships and then you know going to the NCAA tournament every year. And that's not something that you know you can say as a Division One school often. So so the fact that that message was now that. They kind of saw that become a reality, I think, is certainly going to bode well for the future. Speaking now with Steve McTeer, who is the play-by-play voice of the Southwestern Bulldogs. Of course, we were referring to Haley and Hayden, Haley Tucker from Bartlesville, Hayden Pretty from Piedmont, two All-Americans that closed out their years and their careers as national runners-up in the NCAA tournament this year. I want to talk about the postseason a little bit because – we felt like those who watched Southwestern felt like that this was a team that could get to the postseason and make some noise there. They had some some things to overcome once they got there. And one thing in particular was to actually win a Great American Conference tournament. It had been a number of years since Southwestern's women's basketball team had done that. And for Haley Tucker to play on what was her home court in Bartlesville when she played high school ball, that was really a big deal. Talk about their run through the GAC. I think that first game, I think a lot of the thoughts against Northwestern, you know, halftime or so, I think all the all of the Swasu fans that were there were kind of like, we're here again. It's, gosh, we're, we're getting a tough game from the eighth seed. But in a rivalry game like that, I think they expected it to be really good. But I think they really settled in after that game. The intensity they came out with against Harding in the first quarter was something that I hadn't seen all year long. That was, that, that was a completely new breed of intensity that they brought out and and the way that they played against Harding was outstanding and then against Arkansas Tech I mean they knew what they needed to do they had beaten that team in their last regular season game of the season uh so you know after after they kind of survived against Northwestern internally I kind of thought I'm not sure there's a way this team loses this conference tournament at that point there was still not trepidation but there was still some wonder I think of okay how good 
is this team? Like, how good nationally are they? And I guess we'll find out here in the conference tournament. Well, what they did against Harding and Tech, I thought I thought was really impressive. And that, that really set them up for the success they had in the Central Region, certainly. Of course, the run through the Great American Conference Tournament, you open against a rival in Northwestern, and then the semifinals and finals against Harding and Arkansas Tech, the two previous tournament champions, and so definitely making a statement in that. Now you move on then to the NCAA Central Regional Tournament, and the three teams that Southwestern winds up facing, Emporia State, who at that point was the lone loss of the season. You have to avenge that. And then they play Central Missouri, the defending national champions, and then they go on against Fort Hayes State, who is the number one seed and the host in the tournament. Uh, quite an exciting road there. I, I want to get your thoughts on, you know, that particular run, but also against Central Missouri, that last second shot by Taper Beer to win that game and move on into the Central Region Championship. Uh, you know, the excitement I'm sure on your end was just off the charts. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was quite the moment. I mean, you go, you know, first off, the entire region, you had three different sets of motivation that were pretty easy to come up with. Obviously, avenging the Emporia lost. You want to make a statement against the defending national champions that says, hey, we belong here against Central Missouri. And then against Fort Hayes State, you wanted to show them who, in their mind, should have hosted the Central Region. So you know, three fairly easy bullets and board things to pull from those games. Emporia State was worrisome because they play a very aggressive 2-3 zone, and that's kind of the one defense that had given Swasu trouble during the year. Uh, to manufacture the comeback that they did was was impressive, but it was, it was just – Great players making great plays in a big game. Uh, Central Missouri, you know, there wasn't a moment in that game where I thought they were going to lose, but I was worried going in the fourth quarter, down 10, uh, but just big shots and big shots. And then, you know, for Central Mo, it was an untimely technical foul called on their on their, on their head coach, Dave Slyford, that they gave Swastu a couple free throws in the ball. And, you know, down the stretch, uh, Haley Tucker had the ball with I think three seconds left, and I don't think anybody in the gym would have would have slided her if she had taken a double team to fifteen footer because <laughs> she's quite frankly the best player in the country, and nobody would have said anything bad about it. But she made the correct basketball play, and you know Tabor Beer grew up in a gym. Mom coaches at Hammond, and uh, she took one dribble and hit the biggest shot of her life. And then Fort Hayes State, they came out and completely took apart the third best team in the country. They were up 18 at one point. If it wasn't for foul trouble and a girl from Alva, Whitney Randall, having a career night for Fort Hayes, they would have won that game by 20. That was a statement game, <laughs> much like much like the Emporia game was. That was a statement game that showed, I think, the rest of the country that they were a serious contender and maybe the favorite going into the Elite Eight. So that was those, – those three consecutive wins – were probably the three best consecutive wins that anybody had at any point in the country with those three programs and how good they have been uh, and, and, and kind of the legacy of the MIAA and as good as that conference is. Nobody had a three-game stretch more impressive than that. It really was, and that takes them into the national tournament to the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and then the national championship game as Southwestern got victories against St. Anselm and then Indiana, Pennsylvania. Uh, take us to the championship game. Steve, there were opportunities. There really were. And it was a back-and-forth game. No doubt Lubbock Christian came to play, a team that had won a national championship just three years ago, had a couple players from that team. But the opportunities were there, and it was just so close for Southwestern. From your perspective and, and seeing it uh, courtside as you did, how close was it? Uh, it was it was nip and tuck. It really was. I mean, this was it was certainly the two best teams in the country, which I can appreciate. I I liked that. I know that Lubbock Christian was great. They really are, they, and they deserve the national title. They came out and they hit shots. I think top to bottom, Swasu was the most talented team in the country. They just weren't the best team that night. I mean, they got off to a horrendous start. They were two for seventeen in the first quarter. I don't know how many teams come back and win a game after that. <laughs> But they came out in the second quarter. They outscored Lubbock 22-9. to And I think after the second quarter going into halftime, I think they realized, okay, if we, if we take care of business here, we're going to win a national title. But Lubbock Christian made plays. They play a 2-3 zone, which, again, was the only troublesome defense that, that Swasu had all year to play against. And, you know, going down the stretch in regulation, both teams kind of tightened up. I think the nerves hit them a little bit. I think there was one field goal between the two of them in the last, like, two minutes. 
you know, go to overtime and, and overtime was, was, was back and forth, back and forth. But Bethany Franks, you know, talked about her earlier. She had like seven straight points at one point. And, you know, when it's, when it's 70, what I do in the low seventies and Lubbock Christian's got the ball, they draw the play. They come up with a great look that's missed. It's an offensive rebound and then a big shot by by Maddie Chitsy to tie the game at 75 going into the double overtime. I think after that first overtime, I think Swasser kind of realized, okay, you know, that was our best chance. What's going to happen now? Lubbock Christian came out to give him credit. They hit their first four shots of, of the second overtime. And they led by 10. And after that, I mean, you know, I, I don't know how many teams have ever come back from a 10-point deficit <laughs> in an overtime period. Um, but the chances were there. They had a shot to win it at the end of uh, regulation. Uh, they had a They had a you know, two and a half seconds for a half court heave at the end of the first overtime. So the chances were there, you know, a play here or a play there. That's all that separated those two. Steve, then as you wrap up the season and, and look at this again, from a broadcaster's perspective, you opened with that and talked about, you know, what a, what a great opportunity it's been as broadcasters. You don't get this opportunity all the time. And, and how much will you savor something like this and, and look back on it as, wow, this was a great time. Yeah, after the game, after the national championship game, uh, I went over to parents and players and stuff like that. And that's, you know, one thing about following one certain team the entire time. You, know, you get to know the players and the parents and stuff like that. And I'm in a, kind of a unique spot because I'm not very old and I certainly don't look very old. You know, I was in college, you know, more recently than than, than, than a lot of people, you know, around the Great American <laughs> Conference. That's a very nice are you say, say are, are you saying something about my age, Steve? That I'm a child compared to everyone else, okay, basically, all right. uh, which which has been pointed out to me more than more than once by by good friends uh, throughout the conference. But uh, I'm fairly approachable, you know, because I'm not I'm not very old. I I look more like the players than you know uh, than than most. So you know, I've gotten to know them really really well. And through all the tears and everything, I took my little spotting charts that I use for games and have all my notes on them. And I had uh, all the girls sign by their name, and I'm going to get it framed to put up here in my office. Uh, simply because, you know, the odds of this happening again, of having a 35 game win streak and having, you know, a national championship game run, the odds of that happening again aren't great. Certainly possible, but very few teams do that, you know, more than once in a couple you know, decades. So, you know, to, to watch them do what they did, to see the legacies that they left, and to see, you know, how well they represented the university, not only on the floor, but off the floor was something that, you know, I'll treasure forever. I mean, I will always look back to 2018-2019 basketball season and, and think about this team and what they did. And their games are so easy to call. They play an entertaining brand of basketball. Uh, you know, the players were super gracious with their time. Coach Music was always available for pregame interviews or comments or whatever else, you know, because they knew that you know, they had a chance to do something special and they were willing to talk to anybody who would listen about it. Uh, so I will always look back, you know, the day that I retire from from this business, years from now, you know, I'll always look back fondly on this time, and I'll remember it as one of the greatest seasons. No matter what happens in my career or whatever else I see, this will always be one of the greatest seasons that I've ever been a part of. No doubt, it was fun to watch. It was fun to cover in in any way, and you definitely had one of the best seats in the house for the entire season. Steve McTeer, the play by play voice of the Southwestern Bulldogs. Steve, thank you so much for taking time with us today on the Oklahoma Sports Podcast. All right, thanks, Joey.